Exactly. Look, talking about tough decisions, you literally played your whole age group career at Western Province, and then you've played for a good eight or nine years at the Stormers. What made you finally decide, I need to go and play some rugby somewhere else? Again, um, you, you get to a point where you, you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, you, the only thing that you know, it's, it's waking up, going to a certain point where Western Province train and you know, you, you start getting comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and then you decide, okay, you know, the only thing that you know, it's seven years you've been doing the same thing yeah. over and over and over again. And then I decided, you know, when Sharks came, you know, when, when I spoke to Sean Everett and he said, listen, I've got this opportunity for you, would you... You know, consider it consider it coming down to durban i said look you know let's 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 go ahead let's do this you know i've, I've never done something like this before yeah you know let me get out of my comfort zone uh -huh. you know, scared me. that's what i was gonna I, ask I, I, we always to talk be honest, about this to be honest i was but i was i was lucky because there was a mate of mine that studied in in cape town but there was, he was also making his way to durban or sam so oh, Sam okay. made it sort of easier for me to settle down and everything. So it was quite easy, you know. But at the same time, I won't lie. I was, I was, <laughs> I was, I was it was nerve wracking. I yeah. was scared. And uh, just lastly, before we take a break, um, joining the Sharks, like I was saying earlier, I, I genuinely think you've been one of the standout performers for the Sharks. How have you fitted in so seamlessly, and and why are you playing so well for the Sharks? I think it's how the coaching staff. Well, first and foremost, the boys. It's mm -hmm. the hot chicks. Just yeah. <laughs> hot chicks in altitude. Yeah. Yeah. I think, <laughs> you know how the boys have welcomed me. Yeah. And then, you know, then the boys welcomed me and then the game plan suited me. It, mm -hmm. You know, they simplified things for me. I, I guess simplicity for me is the best. It works. Is the, it works for me. You know, it's never clustered with information before a rugby game. Mm -hmm. I mean, the coach knows that I'm talented every single time. He says, boy, just go out there and go have fun yeah. and just enjoy nice. yourself. He knows he knows my capabilities. So he doesn't cluster me and watch out for this, watch out for that. Just go out there and have fun and enjoy yourself. So that's what I've been enjoying, you know, down in Durban. You know, okay. not a lot of information. Just, you know, go out there and enjoy yourself. You know, the rest will come. Skombuza, I wanted to ask you, the last time you played for the Springboks was in 2018. Yeah. Um, have you been thinking about getting back into the green and gold, especially having seen how well they did, you know, win the World Cup last year and having played with so many of the guys um, at the Stormers, you know, Sia, Evan, all those guys. How, how badly are you wanting to get back into the national setup? Um, it's like it's a, like any kid's dream, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially when it's when it's taken away from you, especially yeah. last year, like with injuries and stuff like that, you know, um, with my shoulder and my ankle. It just makes you more hungry because you had the taste of it, mm -hmm. you know, and you know how it feels. And then, then you start, you know, wanting more of it mm -hmm. because you had a taste into uh, when I had the taste, I've got six caps, you know, yeah. and I had to taste, you know, I still want more. And then after the taste, you just don't want the thing to, do, to end. And you basically know what it takes now to get there again. So mm -hmm. yeah, the, the goal is to get there, but at the same time, the realistic thing is to play well for the Sharks to get there. Okay. Yeah. And I, I guess the door's kind of open anyway as well because it's the start of a new four-year, you know, four-year cycle to a new World Cup. Obviously, rusty has got his plans. He knows his people. But, you know, Jacques is now the new coach. Uh, it's definitely, they're definitely going to be looking at, at yeah. everyone once again and it's open for you. Yeah, having, having been in the system before and obviously knowing the coaching staff, how they sort of operate, you know, operate in an honest system. Mm -hmm. You know, the door, it's always from ground zero. I think you've guys probably seen Russ's clips, you know, where... Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, about when that, he, actually. When he, speaks, when he speaks openly about, you know, about selection, about the box and everything like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it makes it it makes viewers understand that nobody gets into a comfort zone mm -hmm. in, in, when you when you, when you you get picked for a national side. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm my, I'm excited, man. You know, I'm excited first and foremost to play for the Sharks. Mm -hmm. I need to play well for the Sharks, obviously, to be in the Springboks. Yeah. But if I play terrible, you know, for the Sharks, I'll never I'll never make the Springboks side. So do I've got to be realistic about it. Just going back to Rusty's videos and the stuff he's been posting, do you think he's changed the mentality of a lot of South African players? Because Sio was talking about that when we were at the World Cup, sort of saying that Rusty changed the way because people were kind of getting selfish about things, yeah. focusing on their own brands, yes. focusing yeah. on other things and not so much on the rugby. Um, I think, to be honest, having in 2018, I always refer to 2018 when I had my opportunity to spend time there, mm -hmm. because obviously in 2019 I was not there. It was an eye opener, you know, to for me personally, 
because one thing that struck my mind and he, and he was right about it and he said you know we we motivate people the wrong way social media mm-hmm. so most of the time we spend time on social media trying to motivate people the, the it's it's a, it's a wrong way of motiv- pay, motivating people mm-hmm. the right way in rugby to motivate people is by playing well yeah mm. that's how wow. you inspire people wow. as a rugby player you inspire people and giving hope to people on the rugby field and that's mentally something that i've stolen from rassi you mm-hmm. know that i've mm. if you stolen or learned you yeah. know i don't know whatever term you want to use mm-hmm. but that's something that i've i've sort of sort of put on my main on my on my mind that how i need to inspire people it's not by tweeting the best tweet how, yeah. well that's his words well, how many you know, likes your face you know, your instagram post together that's or showing you know, the highlight for you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah show it in between the four lines mm. you know that, that's amazing. where it matters even well. for us well I, it <laughs> is actually for, if, yeah i've never cuz cuz all of us get caught up in the hype of social media yeah. when the microphone turns on you got to be you got to be switched yeah. on the sharks have four out of five wins so far three out of four wins on tour now the sharks traditionally tour pretty well um but getting three out of four wins is really really good and the hurricanes you had so many disruptions you might have been able to win that if it hadn't been the case yeah, i don't want to make uh, excuses yeah um yeah it was a tough game um we should have uh, we believed as a squad we obviously we go in every single game want to win but yeah that's the one that we had uh, obviously those as you mentioned those a lot of disruptions but um you can't put it on that um i think you know the canes just played a good 40 minutes of rugby you know especially in that second 40 and then um they just didn't allow us to play sort of our style of rugby and then we we lost the we lost that one do you think um going away this early in the season considering how many guys had left the sharks and how many new guys came in has really helped you Jal is you know because the results are I mean are speaking volumes for for what looks like a good vibe in the team. Yeah, I think you nailed, you know, you nailed on the head, you know. I think that was very important. You know, obviously we had new management, new couple of players. You know, we so we had to we had to get that um I can tell you we we got to know each other pretty more outside of the field, you okay. know, more than on it, you know. It's, couple of pepsis that were flowing around you know, <laughs> Twitter, so yeah, it was quite nice you know it's quite nice to get to know the guys so yeah it's, it's special it's a special bunch of group um it's one that's exciting mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of you know young guys but young and experienced guys so it's really it's really exciting and yeah still but looking forward to the season big one this week aguari is right here in durban you guys have got three home games before the break How much are you looking forward to this clash in particular? It's especially a a big one for for the Ford Pack. Um big one for the people of Durban, mm-hmm. you know, a big one for the for the um for us as 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 players as you mentioned the Ford Pack because obviously they've got a international pack. We know about that. Probably a couple of guys probably that hasn't played international but most of the, the most whole, of them are, are, are Argentinian players, yeah. So it's a good test. It's a good test for us, you know, in Durban, the heat, the humidity. So we're looking forward to it and we're excited. We're excited for the challenge, you know, more than anything else. We we we're very excited just to play in front of our our fans again, you know. It's it's going to be awesome.